Hey there, fellow time traveler through the archives of television. Do you remember the good old days of 1958 when the airwaves were filled with charm and intrigue? Ah, 77 Sunset Strip, a show that whisked us away to the glitzy, noir-infused world of private detective Stu Bailey and Jeff Spencer. But let me ask you this, have you ever watched this classic series back in the day? The one that had us perched on the edge of our seats, sipping a cup of cocoa or munching on popcorn as we followed our favorite characters through the smoky alleyways of Sunset Strip. You'll bet you have some treasured memories of that show, the cool jazz playing in the background, the slick style, and the unforgettable characters. Was Kooky your favorite with his ever-present comb? Or maybe you were more drawn to the suave Stu Bailey, who exuded that old-school detective charm. It's incredible how a TV series can transport us back in time, making us reminisce about the golden era of television. So, what were your favorite moments, characters, or experiences related to 77 Sunset Strip? Share your memories with us. Let's dive into that nostalgia together. Now, let's set the stage for some intriguing random facts about the show that you might not know. Get ready to journey back to the Sunset Strip, my friend. 77 Sunset Strip, a popular TV series that aired from 1958 to 1964, emerged as a quintessential part of the late 1950s and early 1960s American television landscape. Created by Roy Huggins, the show was a unique blend of crime drama and detective mystery set in the glamorous backdrop of Los Angeles. The series followed the adventures of two private investigators, the suave and charismatic Stuart Bailey and his partner Jeff Spencer, who operated out of their stylish office on 77 Sunset Strip. The show was notable for its chic portrayal of the California lifestyle, complete with jazz music, fashionable attire, and luxurious cars. What made 77 Sunset Strip truly iconic was its ensemble cast of characters, including Kooky, the parking lot attendant with a distinctive comb and hair-flicking habit, and the beautiful and resourceful secretary, Susan Fabre. The series successfully blended elements of detective work, light-hearted humor, and an engaging portrayal of the social scene in Hollywood. The show's impact on popular culture was significant, influencing subsequent TV series and leaving an indelible mark on the portrayal of private investigators. It contributed to the era's fascination with glamorous private eye stories and the ever-popular Hollywood backdrop. While it eventually went off the air in 1964, 77 Sunset Strip remains a beloved classic, a timeless representation of an era of style and intrigue. Ownership battle behind 77 Sunset Strip led to Roy Huggins' departure from Warner Bros. In 1958, the television series 77 Sunset Strip made its debut, becoming a popular detective drama of its time. The show was a brainchild of writer Roy Huggins, who created the concept, and the character Stuart Bailey. However, an ownership battle over the rights to the show played a significant role in Huggins' departure from Warner Bros. The pilot episode of 77 Sunset Strip was released theatrically, but Huggins had not written it. Instead, it was a Warner Bros. property because the actual writer had been working for hire, lacking any legal claim to it. Consequently, the legal ownership of the show belonged to Warner Bros., leading to a contentious situation. As a result of this dispute, Roy Huggins left Warner Bros., distancing himself from the show he had helped conceive. While 77 Sunset Strip continued to enjoy popularity, Huggins' role in the series diminished due to the complex legal issues surrounding its ownership. This behind-the-scenes battle sheds light on the challenges faced by creators in the entertainment industry, where the rights to their creations may not always remain in their control. In the case of 77 Sunset Strip, it marked a turning point in the career of Roy Huggins and the series itself. In 1958, the TV series 77 Sunset Strip featured a notable location, Dino's Lodge. This restaurant, situated at 8524 Sunset in Los Angeles, California, was owned by Dean Martin. Unfortunately, it was torn down in 1989. The show took an unexpected turn in its final season when creative control was handed over to Jack Webb and William Conrad. They made a bold move by firing the entire cast, except for Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. They transformed Zimbalist's character, Stuart Bailey, into an international spy, 
Additionally, the Dino's Lodge segments in the series often showcased the Frankie Ornega Trio, a jazz band signed with Warner Bros. Records. The trio had its heyday in the 1950s, and 60 Seconds, headlining at the real-life Dino's Lodge, adding a unique musical touch to the show. These aspects of 77 Sunset Strip provide a glimpse into the show's evolution and its connections to real-life establishments and musicians, making it a notable piece of television history. A building that served as the detective's office in the 1958 TV series 77 Sunset Strip was originally the home of the Mary Webb Davis Modeling Agency. While the front of the building, the Dino's Lodge driveway, and part of Dino's were recreated on a Warner Bros. soundstage for filming, the actual location was the Mary Webb Davis Modeling Agency. In the early episodes, the doorknob on the mock-up door in the soundstage version was on the left, just like the real door. However, it was later moved to the right for some reason. The Mary Webb Davis office was eventually replaced by the Tiffany Theater. Unfortunately, the original building has since been torn down. As for sponsors of the show, they included Anison Aspirin, Sirt's Breath Mints with the Golden Drop of Ritzin, and Salem Cigarettes. In the final eight episodes of the series, a new character named Hannah, played by Joan Staley, served as Bailey's secretary. It's fascinating to learn about the real-life locations and the behind-the-scenes details of this iconic series. The building that housed the detective's office and the changes made for filming provide a unique glimpse into the show's production. Additionally, the sponsors of the series give us a taste of the advertising landscape of the late 1950s, with products like Anison, Certs, and Salem cigarettes being prominently featured. So, whether you're interested in the show's history or the era's advertising, 77 Sunset Strip offers a window into the past. In the sixth season, the office in which Stuart Bailey worked was in the Bradbury Building, a Los Angeles, California landmark. This iconic location added a unique touch to 77 Sunset Strip and became an integral part of the series, showcasing the charm of Los Angeles. The character of Stuart Bailey originally appeared in one novel, and three short stories written by series creator Roy Huggins. The character made his on-screen debut in Huggins' film I Love Trouble, played by Franch Otto. This marked the beginning of Stuart Bailey's journey from the written page to the television screen. This series was produced by Warner Bros. For a BC and 77 Sunset Strip, the kooky caper included some inside jokes about other series produced by the same studio for a BC. Kooky, portrayed by Ed Byans, comically indicated his lack of knowledge about Will Hutchins, the star of Sugarfoot. Furthermore, an issue of TV Guide featuring the stars of Maverick, James Garner, and Jack Kelly was seen in the show, highlighting the interconnected world of Warner Bros. Productions for a BC. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the history and humor of 77 Sunset Strip, a beloved series from 1958 that left its mark on television. As we journey through the captivating realms of television history, it's impossible to overlook the timeless allure of the 1958 TV series, 77 Sunset Strip. This iconic show, a beacon of nostalgia, brought us into the enthralling world of two suave detectives navigating the glitzy, mysterious underbelly of Los Angeles. The series, with its jazzy theme music, sleek convertibles, and intriguing cases, has left an indelible mark on the hearts of countless viewers. Perhaps it's the charismatic charm of Kooky, the mysteries waiting to be unraveled, or the sense of adventure that draws you in. Or maybe it's the vintage allure of a bygone era, a world of fedoras and femme fatales. We invite you to take a moment to reflect on your personal connection with 77 Sunset Strip. Was it a cherished family tradition, a late night indulgence, or the inspiration for your own adventures? What are the moments, characters, or storylines that have etched themselves into your memory? Share your thoughts, your favorite memories, or the impact it had on you. Your unique perspective adds another layer to the tapestry of nostalgia that surrounds this classic series. Join us in celebrating the enduring legacy of 77 Sunset Strip by sharing your stories and thoughts. Thank you for your time and interest in this remarkable journey down memory lane. We look forward to hearing from you and relishing in the wonderful memories you share.